Tory cities debate and the border wall order are drawing strong reactions from Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Political reporter Phil Prazen sat down with the Austin Democrat to get his perspective on the issues and what's next. Life in the Trump administration so far, what, it's, what has it been like? It's pretty amazing. Uh, anyone who didn't realize the importance of the president need only look at the first week and the many things that are occurring that will affect our lives in uh, incredible ways. Uh, we have our work cut out for us. I see my role as being part of the loyal opposition, uh, certainly respectful of the fact we have a new president and new administration, but that our job is to uh, reflect the values of this community and offer alternative, uh, not alternative facts, but alternative uh, points of view and solutions to our problems. Why should Central Texas care about the policies that are coming? Well, I think they will affect our lives in every way, from uh, damaging our public education uh, to affecting our economy and jobs. Uh, and certainly that's a big factor with reference to immigration and all of the policies that he has announced within the last week. When it comes to immigration, what, uh, how important is that issue to you? How important is that issue to your district? It's very important because uh, this district stretches from North Austin to the south side of San Antonio. There are many immigrants and many uh, citizens with immigrant connections here. And it's a really big jobs issue. Our economy throughout this area is so interrelated with Mexico. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a major export market. Uh, it's a major source of goods. And so a disruption building of a wall in more than a physical sense between our two countries will cost people right out of their pocketbook here in Texas if, uh, if this trend accelerates. With what we heard on Wednesday with Governor Abbott coming to say, you know, the sanctuary city idea has always been kind of floating around conservatives, um, but Governor Abbott said something new that he wanted to remove Travis County Sheriff Sally Hernandez. Have, have we heard that before and is that a big deal? It's really outrageous and uh, it seems to be a kind of a continuation of the lock her up. Now it's lock them up because uh, some of his cohorts there actually went a step further and suggested we criminalize people that disagree with them on immigration and who knows what's next. Fortunately, we don't yet live in a Putin-type authoritarian government but we need to resist this trend. As far as the specifics of sanctuary cities, I think there's been incredible misinformation based on campaign speeches about this. There is no legal definition of sanctuary cities. There is no authority either at the federal or state level concerning sanctuary cities. And the best evidence of that are the efforts now renewed to pass a law in Washington and in Austin concerning sanctuary cities. Governor Abbott lacks the authority to deny a penny to Travis County or any other part of the state because they don't like his Republican Orthodox view of sanctuary cities and immigration, nor does he have any authority under the Texas Constitution, much less the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution, to remove Sheriff Hernandez or any other a duly elected official. Because, you know, before this, you know, say if somebody came here illegally, they got a DUI, they would go and get an ICE detainer held on them, and then if the federal them, they could. And now uh, Sheriff Fernandez is just doing that for serious violent crimes, right? Yes, what we saw is that on relatively minor offenses, uh, people were being taken to lock up here and then they would be held on suspicion that they might not be here properly. Uh, I think uh, that she made a decision that it was better law enforcement to focus her resources on people that are really dangerous to our community. Certainly the only thing I do agree with Governor Abbott and the President on in this area is if we've got dangerous criminals out there, they need to be locked up, they need to be in prison. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about whether a voluntary program, the sheriff needs to honor each of those and to keep people imprisoned uh, based on suspicion, which many people in some courts think is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. When it comes to here and moving forward, Democrats are now in the minority 
in D.C., in Texas. How can you stop this stuff? Well, I was extremely inspired by the outpouring, especially here in Central Texas, over 50,000 people turning up for a march. The question is, is that uh, march a moment or a movement? I believe it has the potential of a citizen's movement of holding people accountable. It is important not to just talk to people that you agree with, but to reach out and engage others. I think uh, that uh, this is no time for despair. It is a time for democracy. We, it, I can't do it alone. The Democrats in Congress can't do it alone. But if there's an engaged citizenry, we can make a difference. Uh, as far as the specifics in Congress, uh, the need to have 60 votes for most of these measures in the Senate does provide a potential Republicans. And in the House, it's a matter of respectfully presenting alternative viewpoints, alternative plans as part of a loyal opposition. Congressman Doggett had a lot more to say about President Trump's policies and the impact here in Texas. You can see his full interview now on our website. Just check out the State of Texas link in the politics section of KXAN.com.